All right, peoples, this is Ross. We're going to talk about figs in today's video. What a surprise. Um, <laughs> I want to talk to you guys in today's video about getting earlier ripening figs, figs that ripen at an earlier time of your season. I inevitably get this question every year because I, I ripen my figs starting in July. And I live in the Philadelphia area. For those of you guys that have been watching my channel, I should not be getting figs ripe in the Philadelphia area by July. And that's the main crop, by the way. We're not talking about Brabas. We're talking about the figs that form on the new growth. And a lot of those people who get these questions out to me at this time of the year, they say, Ross, I live in a much warmer place than you. How, will you, how are you getting figs earlier than me? And they Maybe there's a little bit of jealousy. I'd be jealous. I'm always jealous of people in, in like Southern California. But there's people out there that have much earlier springs than I do, right? My spring begins, at least the last frost is May 1st on average. So there's people that have like two months or don't even get any frost before me, right? So, you know, here's my tips. I'm gonna give you guys four or five really good tips there's absolutely no way. I want to preface this whole video by saying there's no way that I could get ripe figs here in early July without assistance from an artificial climate, without assistance from a greenhouse, without some sort of plastic. I'm not going to be able to get these to ripen. It doesn't matter what I do. It doesn't not matter what genetics I have. Getting them by early July is almost impossible. I would say the earliest date and the date that I should expect every year from a potted tree, a potted fig here on my patio, is by the end of July, the beginning of August. And those are only with the very early varieties. So that's tip number one, is that if you want earlier, earlier ripening figs, you have to select earlier ripening varieties. Every variety has different genetics. Everything may have bigger leaves or different leaf patterns or more hardiness or more rain resistance, more split resistance. Some figs ripen in the middle of the season. Some figs ripen at the end of the season. And then of course we have on the opposite end of the spectrum, we have figs that ripen extremely early. And those are the varieties. Here's how you can tell it's a very early variety is that when the fig forms, it's very small. And I can show it to you real heat right here. These little small figlets, if you count the number of days from when this had formed to the time this is ripe, the very early varieties will take about 70 days. And that's subject to a little bit of where I live. But 70 days is the earliest that I will see a ripe fig after formation. Um, actually, here's another really good tip, is that after pinching, I will see figs, ripe figs, ripe main crop, 70 days later on select specific varieties. So as an example, my Azores Dark, my Ron de Bordeaux, um, we have things like Teramo and Yellow Nietzsche's and um, Floria, even some hardy Chicago types like Malta Black, you would end up seeing Celeste as well, you would end up seeing after taking off the tips off my trees in the spring every year, every May, every June 1st, every May 15th, I take off those tips, the figs form 70 days later after I take off those tips, I get ripe figs. So if I take off the tip, do myself some pinching, May 15th, which I do every year, and I have a very early variety like Ronde Bordeaux or, or uh, Celeste. It's going to ripen for me at the end of July. Mathematically, logically, with the amount of heat that we get here, um, that will occur pretty much in an average year, the end of July, beginning of August. And that's after pinching. So if you're not familiar with the technique of pinching, I would suggest you guys go back look at other videos we've done on the technique. I have hours of video. I created a whole playlist dedicated to this technique. And I've also broken down the math. I'm gonna post something on my blog. So check out my blog, figboss.com. I broke down the math and the logic 
to show you guys what the real difference is between pinching and not. And you get about 19 days earlier ripening figs. That's my estimation. I'll know more at the end of this year. But my current estimation based off of my own experience and other growers experience now is that I'm getting figs that ripen 19 days earlier than if I had not taken off the tips, had not pinched. So that's a really big tip there. We talked about pinching so far. We talked about the variety, the genetics. If you're not familiar with the genetics, I would suggest joining a community like rfigs.com or something on Facebook. And you can ask people there, what are the very earliest ripening figs? Now we did touch on the greenhouse, okay? So this is gonna tie into sort of the rest of this is that the greenhouse, as I said, really aids in getting these figs off to an earlier start. But what I've come to realize is that they are achieving a growing degree day requirement. So if I have, if you're not familiar with growing degree days, by the way, those are the amount of heat units that you receive in your climate. So you can look this up. Cornell has a, a link. They have their own little tool. You can even use that tool to center in on a GPS on your exact yard. You can do this on the exact plot, an exact farm, any location in the world you can do this on and see the amount of growing degree days that you have received up to a particular date. And I have found out in an average year, you need about 550 growing degree days, 550 heat units for these trees to actually set their figs. So that's really key here. Because if you have a, a slower start, if you don't reach that 550 days very quickly, it takes you a bit longer, you're gonna struggle to get those figs to ripen at an earlier date. So that's sort of, guys, what the greenhouse does, is that I, I artificially, by putting my potted trees, I had about 30 potted trees in that greenhouse over there, guys. Small greenhouse, six by eight, we got a heater in there kick on that heater in March and April and a little bit of May, and they'll get those heat units, that 550 growing degree days that I need to get these little trees here, these, these potted fig trees, off to a very early start to fulfill that requirement. So that's why I always talk about, guys, in my videos, is getting them off and giving them so much heat, as much heat as you can possibly give them. So it's not just about, guys, putting them in a greenhouse, okay? The greenhouse is letting them ripen here by July. By early July, with the help of a greenhouse, it's pretty much guaranteed that I will get fruit by early July. Now, as I said, without one, I can get fruit by late July at the earliest, but I certainly wanna make sure that I'm giving these trees here that are not in the greenhouse, because there's more than 30 trees here, guys. I have probably close to 100 or more potted trees of figs. And so that means only about a third of them or less than a third of them, I would say 25% of them, receive additional heat, an artificial climate from that greenhouse. So what about the rest of them? Well, the rest of them, it's not like we should give up and not do anything else to them because there's other ways to increase the heat, right? We wanna increase the soil temperatures here, guys. This is really, really key, because it's not just the ambient temperatures, right? Your growing degree days may hit 550, but you may not have ripe figs just yet, or you may not have figs that have set just yet. And the reason for that is you may have different local conditions, right? Maybe you have the ambient heat has reached 550, but you don't necessarily have the sunlight that's coming in and warming up the pots, warming up the soil, as an example. In the spring, these trees don't have a whole lot of foliage. So what happens is the sun comes down, hits the sides of these pots, and actually warms up the sides of the pots, warms up the soil. And that soil stays, or that heat, stays in the soil even overnight, and it really has a nice effect of warming these guys up. And you'll notice I have black pots, I have these bluer light gray pots, and these lighter ones don't heat up nearly as well as these black pots. So if you're trying to get earlier figs, you wanna focus on the color, right? Because that color absorbs more heat than the lighter color. Additionally, 
I don't have any mulch, if you've noticed. I have removed the mulch on top of my soil. Why did I do that? Well, simply because the mulch regulates the soil temperature. When it's very cold outside, the mulch actually increases the soil temperature. When it's very warm, the mulch actually decreases the soil temperature. So what we want to do when it's starting to get warmer out in the spring, we want to remove that mulch because I would rather have the sun beat down on these pots and not regulate the soil temperature to try to get them as warm as possible. What else are we doing here? Well, we have them in full sun or close to it. We have them about eight hours of light. We have them in this southern exposure. Oh, even though, oh, excuse the camera there, guys. Even though I have these big shade trees here, they get about seven or eight hours of light, a little bit more earlier in the spring. We have them on the patio. We have them against the house. We have them near different sources of thermal mass, right? These, this patio, this brick, all this stuff is helping to warm ambient temperatures, therefore increasing the soil temperatures. So that's a really big tip here, guys. Huge tip that's often very overlooked, and that's why I stress it so much. Now, another thing that you guys can do, and this is my fourth tip here, is that you guys can focus on oiling the figs. And I have not, I wanna give you a disclaimer, I've never done this, never oiled the figs, but there are very uh, well-known fig growers, Ison and Condit. Those are the two biggest fig growers of the last 100 years. They describe it in their texts and their writings and their books that they describe the oiling process and how if you just put a little bit of olive oil on the eye of the fig, at the right time, you have to do this at the right time too, I've realized, is that if you mess up the timing with this, it won't work. Um, also, I don't know what the fruit quality is gonna be like. Yeah, you're gonna get some earlier ripening figs by about 10 days, that's what they estimate, is if you oil the bottom of the fig, um, you'll get figs ripening about 10 days sooner um, than you would if you didn't. But I don't necessarily, I haven't done it myself simply because I don't know the timing and I don't know it, what it's going to do to the fruit quality. I'm all about ripening these figs for the experience, for getting that really intensely amazing tasting fruit. So I don't want to do that necessarily, but I think this year we're going to try it. If you want exact instructions, look it up on Google, type in Ison or Condit and type in fig oiling and you will see their texts. They are the biggest fig experts of the last 100 years. I'm sure they know what they're talking about. Um, let's see, and then the last thing I wanna mention is sort of a way, it's just an overall way of growing figs. So we mentioned, I guess you could say, one of the biggest ways, the best ways of growing these figs to get them to ripen earlier is with the help of all that heat, right? That's like a way of growing. I could be, I could have a different approach and say, all right, well, I'm gonna have mulch. I'm gonna add a lot of organic material. I'm gonna maybe just kind of do my own thing and not really focus on warming them up as quick as possible. Maybe I don't wanna, I don't know. But my way of growing them is to warm up those soil temperatures as fast as possible. Now, additionally, so another way that you can get these guys into earlier fruiting is actually by focusing on the new growth. Because if you think about this, the main crop forms on the new growth. If you don't focus your attention and put a lot of care into that new wood, that new green growth, you're not gonna reach, your branches are not gonna reach maturity quicker than other trees. So you need to focus on getting these branches as thick, healthy, robust, vigorous as possible so that they can reach maturity faster so that you can come in here and actually pinch off the tips. So that's what I focus on. I try to warm up the soil. Um, I try to give them as much nutrition in the soil. Maybe we can add some mycorrhizae, micronutrients, some calcium, magnesium. We've talked about our fertilizer regimen, right? giving them the right amount of nitrogen early in the season, giving them all that nutrients, guys, goes a very long way into getting them to maturity quicker.
And I guess you could argue there's another way to get earlier ripening figs is also in the form of pruning. Pruning and training these trees properly will get you earlier ripening figs. And I like to train them as a single stem trunk and I like to have three to four scaffolds and the scaffold should ideally come out and start to create a wider canopy. And you'll notice here, I wanna show you some trees and this is, I've been sub, I've really realized this, this year here guys, really in the last couple weeks is that you can see a tree like this, which is very upright in its growth. It hasn't really spread out all that much. Look how close these branches are to each other. And therefore there's some shading um, some shading of the interior canopy, some shading of the leaves, um, and therefore this tree hasn't put out a whole lot of fruit. It's starting to put out some fruit up here at the top after I did some pinching, but that's because the, the branches now sort of have spread out. If you've noticed, once the branches start growing, because it, it really started down here this year and branched out in different directions, and you'll notice that once the tree, the canopy kind of spread out a bit and got itself more light, more light penetration through that canopy, you then end up having uh, a tree that's going to fruit for you a lot easier and at a much earlier date. So for me, what I'm going to focus on in the next couple of days, I'm going to put a video out on this, is actually spreading these limbs. I'm going to do some limb spreading, some limb bending so I can get these limbs a bit more spread out and not so of those upright growers. You'll notice that some of the figs that really struggle with fruiting, some of the varieties that don't fruit as easy are more upright growers. So we need to focus on with this particular fig is kind of bending some of these limbs in different directions. I'm gonna to try to kind of in a way bonsai these guys and then pruning is another one. I'll just leave you guys with this, is that if you were to, as an example, take off the, the growth tip, here is the growth tip right here that we pinched this off to induce the fruits. But if you take this off in pruning, you actually, if you leave this on, I should say, you will get about two weeks of earlier production in most climates because the growth that comes out of this in the spring will actually be stronger, more robust, more vigorous, and reach that maturity quicker, and you'll have earlier ripening fruits. But if you remove these tips when we do our pruning in the fall, our dormant pruning, we're then removing that growth, this apical bud. This apical bud, by the way, guys, has a ton of energy. This really does reach maturity quicker you're gonna then instead allow your tree to then branch out and put out much more vigorous growth, which could not necessarily be a bad thing, but it is something for thought, food for thought. If you wanna do this the earliest way possible, I would try to preserve those tips, get them off to the greatest start of the season by giving them some heat, focusing on the soil, giving them those nutrients that they need, um, selecting the right varieties, um, doing your pinching and potentially even oiling the figs. So I wonder if you did all of that, every single one of those, what would happen, how early they would be instead of early July, what could I be looking at? We'll talk to everybody soon, all right? I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Take care and check out our blog, figboss.com. Also a quick shout out to Tony Woolard. I heard he's not feeling all that great. Hope you feel better, buddy. Take care.